Welcome to In The Cart, sponsored by MB Golf Cars and Club Car. Today we're at Brandon Golf Course, and I'm here with Andrew Bauer. He, just tell me his title. A little bit of everything, right? Yeah, I do it all, but uh, I think officially it's golf course manager, but it's general manager. Uh, head golf professional and, and whatever else I need to do on a day-to-day -day basis to, to make things go. Do you do like uh, coaching or do you like, do some lessons with people too? Um, I, I used to do a lot more teaching. Now we've just, we've become so busy. Um, I don't have much time to teach. We do some junior clinics um, through the city of Brandon summer rec program in June. Okay. Um, but that's about the extent of my teaching anymore. Hopefully in the future we can uh, get some other golf professionals out here to, to really focus on that part of the operation. Sweet. Well, you have a you have a great operation out here. You've went through some changes here recently, right? Yes. Uh, we had some flooding issues out here with Split Rock Creek, right? Yeah, so 2019, September of 2019, so a, a little over four years ago, where we're driving right now, we would have about six more feet of water <laughs> over our head. So we had a record flood. It, it was pretty devastating. It, it ruined the bunkers, the fairways. Um, luckily our greens didn't suffer any damage, but we still went through a long process working with FEMA and getting funding to mm -hmm. repair and make this stuff all better. And this is kind of our first year, quote unquote, back to normal. So it's been uh, awesome to see the course in this good a shape again. And, and it's really shown in the rounds we're getting and the compliments we're getting from people. Well, that's kind of why I wanted to do it right now. You had a full summer here to kind of grow things in, and it's looking great. Uh, we didn't get to golf it this year. We're going to golf it after our round here, yes. after we talk. But um, I've already noticed changes right away here. A lot of trees have been taken out here. Yeah, so we, uh, unrelated to the, the, the damage from the flooding, we also redid our whole back patio and retaining wall that sits over the 18th yeah. green. Um, the old one was old, it was failing. <laughs> it had been in bad shape for a lot of years, so we finally got that done. Um, took a long time, it was a very expensive project. So that happened last fall in the spring, but as you can see, it looks incredible. It's, it's amazing. In my opinion, probably one of, if not the coolest view you get from a clubhouse on the course uh, in the area, if not in the state. I think you're right. Like the, the only thing that would rival it maybe is the Black Hills. Obviously, they have a lot more going on there. But right. for, over here, <laughs> it is one of the best views um, the whole of, of the course here. Yes. Um, so you could also add a construction manager to your title. Or what no, else did you no, say? No, 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 no. We had thankfully had good engineers and good contractors <laughs> that handled all that. You know, I just I just kind of had to figure out how to make the day to day <laughs> operation run during that. So. Yeah. I'm also thankful that's over because that's not easy to, <laughs> to keep people golfing and keep them happy when you've got construction every which way you look. I know I talked to you last year about it and you're, you're stressed out about it and like just you're so, going to be so excited when this year you got yes. over with. How, how, did, how was it this it's year? It's been great. Yeah. Now, now there's just other things that stress yes. you out. Now, now we're just busy with people every single day, which is an amazing thing to have. When I started here 10 years ago, it wasn't that way. So it's yeah. awesome to see the course full and People enjoying it every single Absolutely. day. Absolutely, and you recently had a, a child, so congrats on that. Yes, so that's a lot, a lot on your plate. I'd yeah, say, so right if now. I'm incoherent or falling asleep <laughs> or something, that's why it's it's not because you're boring me. It's it's because I am not sleeping a whole lot at home. That's why I offered to drive in case you <laughs> yes, fall asleep at the absolutely. wheel. Absolutely, it's fantastic. I think we're gonna try to sneak through these guys right here, so we can kind of get down hole number one while we're waiting for a few people here. Thanks for letting us um, accommodate us. Have a good day, guys. So yeah, we, we've had a lot of renovations here this year, uh, but it's looking great. Uh, what kind of stuff did they actually do besides like, you know, reseeding all that? Yeah, so we had actually Landscapes Unlimited, their construction company, mm -hmm. um, a lot of people know them. They manage the Sioux Falls City courses. They do an awesome job there, but their construction arm of their company, we had to come in and they basically tilled up, uh, reseeded, regrew in the, all the fairways that were damaged. There were seven of those. Um, we have 15 bunkers on the golf course. All of those, the drainage was um, filled with silt and, and muck and mud from the flooding. So those all had to be dug up, um, you know, yeah. redrained, uh, new sand, which our bunkers were from years and years of flooding had been in bad shape. So that was an awesome thing to get done. That would be great to play out of those again. I'm, I'm actually looking forward to that because like sometimes the bunkers do are, are neglected a little bit. So it's yes. been nice to kind of get those redesigned. Uh, as far as the green aspect, I think I love your greens here. What Did you do anything special with the greens? No, we haven't changed anything there. Um, our superintendent, Kelly Eilers, he's been here for the same amount of time. I have about 10 years now mm -hmm. and he's done a wonderful job kind of bringing the greens to life. They roll <laughs> great. 
Um, he can get them really fast. He wants we've to. got yeah, we've got nine of them from the original nine holes that were built in '79 that are extremely undulated. Okay. So we sometimes have to be careful with how fast they are because you lose a lot of pin positions quickly. But um, the greens are definitely what make this a, a, the place it is. Absolutely, yeah. And like I said, the conditions are always fantastic here. Um, how, how would you describe this course to a, a player who's ever played it before? Uh, so you've never been here before, and you know I'm talking to you about it. Probably start with the greens. You know they're they're extremely challenging. You want to be in the right spot. Um, mm -hmm. And if it's your first time here, you might not know where that is. <laughs> so you might have to find out the hard way. Um, even but even if you've been here a few times, it might pretty, be kind of hard for yeah, you too. <laughs> right? Yeah. It's it's uh it's not it's not a extremely long course. There's sure. a, a ton of different ways to play it. You can try to overpower it, hit driver everywhere. Yeah. Um, you can you can lay back and still have wedges. It's true. Um, it's really it really works for everybody. There's a, a ton of different ways to play. We just had the high school state tournament out here uh, Monday and Tuesday of last week, and man, I watched all these kids play play every hole a whole bunch of different ways. So that's always fun that it's not kind of cook and cutter. You, you have to hit for a driver. Sure. There's some courses it's like you can't use your driver much, right. and you're like some people are really uh, uh, strong armed by that because they that's not their game to, to play a, a, sh a shorter club, right? Yeah, and this and you you can you can hit driver on every single hole here if you want to. Yeah. Is is it gonna work out? Maybe, but if you get in the <laughs> in the trees every hole and uh, it can it can be tough to make pars and bogeys when you're doing that. Absolutely. There's a lot of mature trees out here. Uh, they're very full, uh, so they can really eat up your ball when you're not prepared for it. Yeah, and I always describe it too as they're they're still kind of at that they're at like an awkward height now uh -huh. where they're they're. Tall enough now, it's really hard to go over them unless you hit the ball really high, but they still probably aren't fully mature, so going underneath still isn't the easiest thing in the world. Absolutely. So I think they're in a, they're in probably in probably as difficult as they'll ever be right now. <laughs> we'll but see we, how that changes are, throughout the years. We are kind of like everyone else that's in vogue right now, taking trees out, trying mm -hmm. to promote some healthier turf, uh, make it a little more playable because, yeah. you know, uh, everyone who's playing out here is not a tour star, tour level. We want you want you to have, come out and have fun, no matter your skill level, and not just be hacking around in the trees and all day. You know what? Either. I appreciate that. Golf should be there for everybody, every skill level. You got multiple tee boxes out here. How many tee boxes do you have? Yep. So we have four. We have our, our gold back tee boxes, which can stretch to right around 6,400 yards. Mm -hmm. Then we have our regular blue tee box, which is kind of the regular men's tee. Mm -hmm. um, that's about 5,900 to 6,000 yards, depending how we want to set it up. We have a senior tee that's roughly 5,400, and then a red tee. Um, that could be a senior tee or a, a ladies tee, whatever. Family. It's open for yeah. anybody. Yeah, that's 5,200, 5,100. Yeah. Um, we've got a lot of different tee boxes on each hole too, so we can, you know, for, for tournaments or events, can really move them around and, and make some holes play differently, yeah. make it a little more exciting. Based on the event, you could extend it or make it shorter if it's a scramble, yeah. just kind of a charity event. Uh, so we're at hole number three here, uh, kind of a shorter par four, would you say, right? A yeah. Dog leg left, yeah, it's just about a from, move. from the back tee, it's about 380, typically plays downwind in, in the yeah. normal south wind. Um, it's it's a great example, uh, like me personally, if I see that the pin is in the front of the green, the greens, this is a very difficult green. It looks flat, but it's very difficult. Okay. But I will lay back because it's a hard little 40 yard pitch shot if you drive it way up there by the green. Wow. So the, the play position can dictate what you do off the tee, but mm -hmm. it's fairly generous of uh, landing area up here. So it's, yes. you know, you have all kinds of options. I appreciate that because some people will just say, just try to get as close as you can. And those wedge shots aren't always easy. No, and, and uh, to me, it depends on, on pin position, all that stuff comes in. I, I think as a general rule mm -hmm. for most amateur golfers, get as close as you can get to the green. It is. It's, it's yeah, always right? easier. <laughs> Um, Typically going to be better yeah, for you. I'm, if I'm attacking a hole, I'm looking at how am I going to hit it really close. Where, yeah. an, uh, you know, your your weekend warrior amateur might be thinking, how can I get it on the green and just get a birdie putt? Absolutely. You know, get that chance then for a birdie. Yeah. Uh, so another is a par three here. Uh, this hole is always a challenge for me because that wind is kind of out of the south here a lot. Correct. Um, it's, it falls off the back uh, pretty steep. And left is bad, uh, sand trap over there. How do you left, describe this hole? Left is really bad here. <laughs> you do not want to go left. Yeah, this is a tough uh, par three. You can stretch all the way to 210 if you get to the back tee. Mm -hmm. From the regular tee, it plays about 175, but like you said, it's back into that south wind typically. 
So you can, you know, you're hitting four and five irons on this hole. Absolutely. It's a, it's a pretty small green. I think it's the third small screen on the golf course. It falls off on the right, it falls off on the back, and left is no good. Yeah. Um, so, and even the out of bounds on the left can sneak up on it's you quickly. It's pretty close. Yes, so, we've had some over there over the yeah, fence before. But there, there's I mean, nothing wrong with hitting it between this cart path yeah, and the green and chipping on. Or even on. just short, you yes. know, that's fine too. Yes. Uh, I, guess I don't like being behind many greens typically, but, no. you know, this one would be one like that too. Yep, it's okay back here. Yeah. Got a couple people playing here. We're going to see what they're up to. Might be waiting. I can you can probably pull it yep. through. We're just gonna go quick, guys. All right, we're just filming some. Thank you. <laughs> this is a really picturesque hole here. This is hole five. I really love this one because uh, because of the back backdrop on it yes. here. Yeah, it's a good hole. It's 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 a tight driving hole, yes. but it's it's pretty short, probably 360, 370 from the back tee, depending mm -hmm. on the pin position. This is, I don't know, maybe my favorite hole. I had a hole in one on this hole last year. Oh, wow. So on par four, 367. <laughs> so I have a special place in my heart on this hole. So, but we've changed it a lot too. There used to be very thick trees over here on the right. Okay. And we've taken out almost all of them. There's about five or six left is all. We're trying to promote a little better turf. That's going to take a few mm -hmm. years. But um, it's still enough to constrict the fairway. Yeah, and, and we did it, in my opinion, the right way. We took out all the trees back further yeah. um, where the better players are still going to be dealing with trees if they want to push a driver up here next to the hole. Yeah, left is, there's a lot of stuff, uh, not a lot of space left on here uh, no. without a bounds uh, and a bunker on the left. But a pretty long green uh, from front to back. Uh, yep. Yeah, it slopes severely from left to right. And back to front it's built right up into this hillside here mm -hmm. um we've actually since the renovations we've added a little short grass runoff area that the ball okay. will come off of now on the left there i see that um, i like that so it's still it's still it's new so it's still kind of growing in and we're getting it to where the way we want it to play but yeah it's a cool new little feature on the screen because uh, if you use. do go left you're able to kind of it'll, yeah, it'll it, filter it down it should carry them off and um, maybe we have a back left pin here today, which would be a perfect example. You could probably try and hit a wedge in there a little long and left and it should roll back to the hole from there. Absolutely. But once again, you go long here, it's in, you're in trouble. Yeah, long is, long is bad. Yeah. Um, there's not, there's not many golf holes anywhere where long is good, but long <laughs> is really bad on most holes yeah, here. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Hole number six here, par four, kind of, uh, coming yeah. right back at towards the clubhouse. Yeah, this is a great hole. We've got water on the right, a fairway bunker on the left. Um, it, it really is probably a layup off the off the tee if you want to uh, want to play smart. You've got a green surrounded by water on three sides. Mm -hmm. um, it's still generous though. There's plenty of room. You've got you've got a good 20 yards from the fairway to the water on the right. So you've got a totally. Little, yeah, if you wouldn't mind if we could just go through quick. We're not playing. We're just videoing. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, this this hole, like you said, just as a layup hole for sure. Uh, get a good, pick a good uh, distance that you want to hit into the green, and yeah. just make it happen, right? Yeah, it's a good one to get you that 100 to 100 yard and 40 yard shot, and yep. just get something on the green. Par is always a really good score here. Right. Um, uh, the further you try and push it up here, it's pinching in, it's getting tight, the water comes in. Um, so it's a, this is a really good hole. It's one of my favorites. And this one's got a nice little frame around it too with the, your fescue and you know the water wrapping around it. Yep. Very picturesque. Yep. Yeah, it looks good. So tell me about Brandon. Uh, city run or privately owned? Yep, so we're owned by the city of Brandon. It is a municipal course. Mm -hmm. um, it's extremely nice for a municipal course. Um, we're pretty spoiled in my opinion in this area with our public golf. It's all extremely well run and good conditions. Um, and I don't think this is any exception here. We've got a great golf course. Um, I'm really happy the community has stuck with it. Obviously there's been some tough years and a lot of different management companies and other types of things that have mm -hmm. been out there and been interested. So I'm happy the city stuck with it. I, I think they do an awesome job and they kind of let me run with it out here and, and do my own thing and do what I think is best for the course. It is a lot of trust you put in uh, people and a course. Like if people that are non-golfers, it's kind of hard to understand it. But places like this really become like a, a cornerstone um, highlight for the community of Brandon, I think. Um, something 
something for the people to do uh, here, right? Absolutely, and I think it's something for, for the city, city of Brandon citizens here to be really proud of. Um, there's probably a lot of cities in, in America that would kill to have a place like this. <laughs> Um, and we're lucky enough to have it and you know sometimes it could be hard to appreciate that especially if times are tough and yeah you know golf golf and golf courses are expensive so that's always uh, that's always a tough thing to to kind of convey to people convince. and, and yeah. convince and, and get them on your side when it the, the dollar <laughs> amounts can look really big sometimes with some projects or other things you have to do yeah and we well we thank them uh, yes they're the golf is up right now, obviously, but we hope that everybody can just um, support golf, even when it is, if it turns around and goes goes downward. Uh, we're gonna let this guy chip on here, but I'll just stop here. Let me uh, see. Do you want me to go yeah. through? Yeah. Okay. We're, we're gonna just through. gonna scoot through. Is that all right? Thank you. Have a good day, guys. So the one thing I've noticed that is new, uh, we didn't play here last year. We haven't played here this year. Is your um, your GPS on the carts and. Um, the, the whole view here too shows the, the the different brakes and stuff in it. Tell me about that. Yeah, so these are just, uh, it's called Pace Technologies. It's kind of a, a deal with EasyGo, who we have our golf course with. I know it's sponsored by NB Club Car, shout out them. But, <laughs> so we have the GPSs uh, here. They've been great. Selfishly, we, we more get them for the, the back end, the management. We, yes. can, we can track the carts, we can control where you can and can't go. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been huge for around the greens. We're not having that car traffic right up next to greens anymore. So when you do miss a green, you get better lives. Chipping's a lot more fun. Absolutely it, right. Aesthetically, it looks a lot better when there's not car tracks all around the greens. I, so many times I watch people that you know they don't have that option, and you know, and they're like so close to the green. I'm like, oh, please, no. Right. Yes, and, yes. All you golfers out there, 30 <laughs> feet away from greens, tee boxes, anything like that, that we're trying to keep nice for you. Um, that helps out a ton. It, obviously, you know, one cart's not going to hurt it, but when you have, say, a Saturday out here, we'll have 300 golfers in a day. Yes. If all 300 drive in that same spot, it gets worn out really fast. <laughs> and it takes a lot of water and Correct. the heat of the day, it just is hard on it. Yes, and, so, and, and everyone, superintendents, do an amazing job and work extremely hard. Mm -hmm. It is not easy to grow grass at one thirty-second of an inch or, and keep it that way and keep it green and healthy. So. Anything we can always do to help them out is is huge as golfers. Definitely right. Yeah, you're right because it so short needs more water than any other uh, your lawn would ever need. Yes. And some people don't take care of their yards very well either. So, <laughs> uh, so here we are. This is a par five, right? Yes, number um, eight. Um, great hole, short par five. Um, very reachable in two for most players. Okay. Um, winds typically off the left and down, so it's very reachable. Um, the fun really begins when you get on the green. This green is wild. It's got three tiers, I would say. It's got like a bottom right, a, a middle left, and a top right tier yep. um, with a couple severe slopes. If you get in the wrong spot on the screen, a two putt can be really challenging. <laughs> yes. And like I was thinking, if you're over here left, you got to chip up this thing. You know, you got you to be more in the center of the green on this. Yeah. And, and it's it's great because we've got the water on the right. So, you know, no one's going to want to hit in the water. So you hit it left <laughs> and then you come up here and even to this pin we see today, this chip you would have to <sighs> short side it is difficult. It's going to roll past and you're going to put back up. But what do you do, right? Right. <laughs> All right. So this is a number 10 handicap hole. We're coming back in. This is hole nine, right? Yes, this is hole nine. So this hole's changed a lot. Um, okay. We've taken out, and which oh. we're currently doing, so we're taking out a lot of trees here. <laughs> um, it used to be just thick forest on the left, and then we've got a penalty area on the right. Mm -hmm. It was a really tight driving hole, um, really difficult hole. We really struggle with the water on this hole. This is kind of the low point, the drainage. So yeah. we built the car path all the way up it. Um, don't love concrete cart paths everywhere, but they're a necessary evil in public golf. Yeah. Um, we'd have too many days with, with no carts you if we didn't play. Yeah. yeah. Cause this is a, this is a wet one, but yeah, this hole is uh, kind of, it's tight, tight driving area. But if you're a really long hitter, you can take a crack at getting it up by the green. We've taken out enough mm -hmm. trees, but again, you, you drive to the safe side left over here. You've got to deal with the bunker. Um, yep. the green's all sloping away from you there. So it's a good strategic hole. Um, this is probably, overall, this is my favorite hole on the golf mm -hmm. course. Yeah, it's really fun to play. Obviously, I'm looking forward to not having so many trees on the left, but, you know, in the right, it's it's tough over there. You got to stay out of that, um, 
of the wetlands area, yeah, right? In, in the, we, we burn this off every spring. So yes. in the spring, it's great. You can hit it in there, play out of it. But by the time you get to middle of summer now, it's it's not a place you want to be. It's not the same. No, you, won't, you will not find your golf ball in there. <laughs> So down here is your driving range um, area, practice area there. Uh, that's been a staple, uh, I think, for a long time. I don't know if you've done anything to that this year. Yeah, no, we, we really haven't done anything with the driving range. It's still the same. Um, we kind of got still the old school two-tiered inefficient tee. Uh -huh. um, so it's not a, it's not ideal. It's not close to the clubhouse, but we have we have it. So it's still, still great for warming up before events or before your round, especially now, you know, 85% of our play is in a cart. Mm -hmm. So it's not too big of a deal to take your car down no, to the range. Eagle, and pick up, up your car, your clubs, come yeah. back. I mean, yeah, that's no big deal. But yeah, to hoof it up and down this hill, that would be a little bit of a challenge. Right. Yeah. So like <laughs> also like state high school events does, it's challenging because they've got to walk down there, walk back up to use the putting green. Luckily, but they're young. Yes, exactly. It's good for them. <laughs> but I should probably do the same. I know. <laughs> a little bit more, right? But when the kids keep you up at night, uh, I'm taking the cart. Yeah. No. <laughs> Uh, so your cl your clubhouse is probably one of the most iconic in the area too. Uh, you host a lot of events here. You have a full uh, pro shop. Uh, tell me about your clubhouse. Yep. So the clubhouse was built in 2002. Um, so amazingly, it's over 20 years old already, which is, is crazy. Um, but yeah, it's very nice. We have a, a large event space upstairs. We do weddings. Um, we have a church that rents it out all year long. Mm -hmm. They have church services on Sundays. Um, graduations, we do a lot of uh, any kind of baby shower parties. Um, we also have the bar area downstairs that kind of can host smaller parties and stuff like that. It's great right. for golf events, um, gathering afterwards for food and, and whatnot. Absolutely, that's um, fine. But yeah, good pro shop, uh, good size pro shop. Hopefully in the future we'll be adding some more perks in there. I don't know. We'll see how things go. But yeah, and then uh, then you have the view from it. Yeah, the, the patio view here after your round is second to none. Uh, I don't think there's anything like it in eastern South Dakota. Um, or it, probably in our coverage area in general. No, well, it's no, it's it's no, you know, up top at Landman. <laughs> um, but yeah, for for little Brandon, South Dakota, it's a pretty darn good. You might view. have more amenities here. Uh, it's a bigger space, yeah, obviously. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's okay. <laughs> Yeah, and you can heckle people as they're coming in on uh, 18 over here. Yeah, there's been some good. You know, we 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 have, well, I call them kind of four or five big tournaments every year. Um, so the four person scramble we have in June, there will be a good amount of people up here giving people some, hanging out and talking some, some kind words as they come up and may or may Encouragement. not hit good shots. Yes. <laughs> uh, I stopped here on purpose. Uh, hole number 10, uh, the tee shot here. This used to be hole number one. Yes. Uh, back when I was first started playing this course. Uh, huge drop. You know what the, the feet level drop is? I don't. I, 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 it's somewhere in the neighborhood of 40 feet. Okay. Um, I only know that from the elevation of doing this wall. So I, let's the 45, 40 feet mm -hmm. probably drop from the front of the box. Obviously, our tee box is tear up, so it's yeah. quite a bit higher if you're playing the back tee box up there. And what is the right play on this hole? There is no right play. You, <laughs> you can send a driver at the green, try and go over the trees. We've got the, yep. the city of Brandon water tower in the background, okay. which is always a decent aiming point. If you hit a draw, you can hit it at that and kind of draw it off. There of that. you go. See, I wasn't sure the aiming point. I, yeah, I, I it's like either that. The, the performing arts center is right next to the water tower. You just pick some point left or right of those. <laughs> Depending and, how far you hit that. Draw. Otherwise, if you want to play safe, you can just hit a hit yeah. an iron or or something. My, yeah. my my some of my earliest memories as a child are watching my dad play this hole, and he was a notoriously poor player. <laughs> Sorry, Dad. <laughs> I watched him hit a lot of six irons over the highway. Oh, so, no. Yep. Um, if yeah. I could go back in time and as a four or five-year-old give him advice, they just hit your driver because if you're going to hit it over the highway, hit it far and over the <laughs> just highway. Just as well go for so, it, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. All right. We're going to head down this here. Uh, this I, I love this little drive right here coming down the, the cart path. And so there are tee boxes down at the bottom. If you don't feel like adventurous, like you want to hit from yes. the top. But... It's a really cool opportunity. I would encourage you to hit from the top because it's it's a pretty cool view. Yeah, always. Typically, we only have our red set of tees down here. Um, uh, but yeah, I would say, especially if you're you're not a you know a season pass player or someone who plays out here all the time, you'll you'll play from up top. You absolutely. Want to. We love to see those uh, those unique opportunities and like let's go back and play the blacks or whatever. Just yep. just because we want to see uh, how it looks from up there from the eye perspective. Right. Uh, so it's very generous up here, actually, uh, but still 
it, it's a it's a mind game when you're yeah. looking at it from up there and there's trees up there that do kind of create like a little tunnel vision for you yeah and it's and it's kind of and it's kind of throughout the course if you look at the landing area here probably where your average player is hitting mm -hmm. it extremely wide yeah. um then as you get up closer to the green if you want to get more more aggressive it's you, there's not as much there. there's not as much room from some evergreens here to to the river there and then again we've got a extremely undulated green that there's no easy shot from around <laughs> there here. There really if you have, isn't. If you have a bad angle, you might have, you know, if you want to try and make birdie or get up and down from a bad angle, you you're inviting making good, six, seven, eight, good luck, nine into play. Yeah, that's you got to be strategic um, on this one, I would say. Uh, yeah, your bunkers are looking really nice. Good job there. Yeah, look, look at this green. It's so undulating. Yeah, this is one where when when they get really fast, there it's it's hard to find a spot to put Just it. Hang on, spare. <laughs> <laughs> so in here is where the the creek kind of runs along, and I don't know where the flooding came in at. But did you, did you do any um, embankments here to kind of prevent that? Yep. So we we did do some bank stabilization. It's not going to prevent anything, mm -hmm. but especially here on eleven, we were getting some pretty severe erosion, um, and if. Yeah, I, I wish I could say if, but when it floods again, um, we don't want that to keep eroding because it could yeah. get, it was getting fairly close to the fairway. So yeah. now we've, we've done some stabilization with some riprap and, and some some vegetation over there. Okay. That was part of the, the FEMA project along with the fairways and bunkers, um, as well as a, a, a new pump house irrigation system that was ruined in the flooding. So Okay, well that will help too then. Yes. Um, this this is another one of these that maybe an iron off the tee is a good play. Yeah, you almost want to. We've got a 150 yard uh, post out in the middle there, a white stake. It's you you just shoot that with your range finder and hit whatever club you need right at that, and yep. it, you won't find yourself in any trouble. And if you want to be really conservative, the the pond doesn't start, and so you've got <laughs> 150 yards in, and if you want to leave it short of the pond and have about 180 in. Yeah. So you don't have to take on the water. Don't have to take on the water. I don't know many that don't, but you <laughs> but, don't have but it's, to. But it's there. Yes. It's there for you too. <laughs> yeah, this is this is the number one handicap hole. Okay. Um, which doesn't mean it's the most difficult, because um, handicap holes are basically the difference between a what a scratch player will do on the hole and a bogey golfer. Um, okay. So it's a very difficult hole for a bogey golfer. Um, scratch golfers probably don't find it as hard. It's yeah. a four iron wedge. Yeah. Um, but it does have a, a very difficult green as well. This is one of the original nine holes, so it's okay. got that really undulated green. You know, especially if, if you get this back into a north wind, mm -hmm. um, you can you can have you know five six iron into a very small green that doesn't have a lot of margin for error around it. Yeah, you're totally right. It's, there's a lot of um, a lot of uh, angles and or like hills and stuff. You could just kind of take a weird bounce right. or. Even on the edge of the green, on the fringe, it could be could be in, in danger. Yep, and all these holes along the river, so 10, 11, 12, 13, especially in the north wind, are, are affectionately known as the gauntlet to the, oh. the, the more seasoned players around here. I that's like that's it. how the they gauntlet. refer to it. So Sweet. it's always, if, if you can get around the gauntlet, okay, you have a chance to shoot a good score. <laughs> I like that because you're exactly right, because the next hole coming up here is like a dog leg right, trees on the right, and the creeks on the left. Yeah, um, number 12 is, I like it. I think it's a good hole. It's it's uh, polarizing with people. Okay. Um, there's plenty of people that don't enjoy. Sure. Number Where's 12, Nick Meyer? Thank you. Yeah, um, yeah we've got a, a giant cottonwood that kind of guards the, the right side of the fairway mm -hmm. on the dog leg. Mm -hmm. um, to me, it's a great hole because you should just hit it out to the left and accept that you're going to have 180 to 200 yards in. Yeah. You know, every hole out here, you you can turn it into a wedge hole in. But sure. to me, this is the one par four where <laughs> you've got to kind of put your big boy pants on and hit a couple really good shots. You do. Uh, if you want to make four. And if you really want to be conservative, and, and I tell this to people I've, I've taught and kids and stuff playing out here all the time, just play it as a par five. It's the easiest par five you can have. Uh, then four will feel really good and five won't bother you. And five doesn't bother you then. You'll hopefully stay out of trouble. That is some good advice <laughs> there. And that's why we do these in the carts. So to get you a little tidbit yeah. of info that you might not have thought of. Yes. How many of you are straight par golfers? You know, not very many of us. Have we gotten a par game before? Maybe. But <laughs> bogey. Play the bogey game on this one and maybe you'll get lucky. Yeah, if you made five here all year long, you would pick up shots on your friends over the course of a year. There you go. Without a doubt. 
I've, I've seen two to 14 as a score on this hole, <laughs> so. <laughs> That's a, that's a crazy stat right there, but I believe it 100%. Just in tournaments, so who knows what's happening. Yeah. We're going to see how these guys did here. Looks like you got some good drives hey up here. These guys have played a round or two here before. You know what you're doing. <laughs> He's telling us how to play this, and this is like uh, <laughs> position A's. Don't play from the tips either. Well, there's another adv some advice for yeah. you. You don't have to play from the yes. tips. Play the correct tees for you. Even <laughs> so, And I would say this is a great example of a golf course um, where you look at the scorecard and say, oh, this is short. Let's, let's yes. go play the back tees. Well, <laughs> it's, it's not necessarily plays as short as the card says because of how tight it is in holes like this where we've yeah. got to just play out to the left, yep. accept a 200 yard shot in. You're playing the shot line of the hole and not cutting anything. Right, and I'd say this is a great example where, you know, and, and there's a lot of other <clears throat> golf courses out there too like that where don't just go to the back because the scorecard yardage is short. Yeah. Probably play the same kind of sets of tees you play normally <clears throat> because yeah. I think it's the two up tees at like Prairie, Prairie Green mm -hmm. are the same yardage as our back tees here. Okay, but yeah. I would I I would still say the two ups at Prairie don't play as long as it would from the back here. Yeah, I'd have to agree with you on that. Okay, so we have a par three coming up here now. We're gonna try to get it turned around here. This is kind of along the creek as well. Yeah, it doesn't play into the hole at all, but I love this hole here. I think it's another. Uh, it's a fun fun par three. Pretty big green. Um, uh, pretty flat too. I would say. Yeah, it's a cool little par three. Uh, plays anywhere from 125 to 160. Um, wind swirls kind of back. You're, you're kind of protected back here in trees, yeah. so it's hard to get a read on the wind. Um, if you land a little left of the hole, it will bound down into the creek. A little right and slopes off pretty severely too. But yeah, it is a flat, generous green. You're usually hitting a pretty short club. It's, mm -hmm. it's a good chance to make a two. Absolutely, here's your chance right here. It's fun to talk about your course, right? Yeah, it makes me think about it in ways, you know, I don't, mm -hmm. I probably think it about it that way, but I don't verbally yeah. say it out loud. It's just kind of interesting to actually Verbalize process a thought. So yeah. Normally I'm just, if I'm out here thinking about it, I'm just playing and I know what I want to do. And Yeah. <laughs> I think the great thing about this in the cart series is we get to get an inside look of uh, the clubhouse people, uh, golf pros at the courses that we've never even thought of before. and. Andrew just said it too. He's like, I, you know, I've never really vocalized this stuff before about um, how to play these holes and um, kind of your in impressions of the course. Like, we get to go to a lot of courses. I'm sure Andrew has too. But um, talking about your own course is really fun. So here we are, uh, uh, hole 16, 14. Or 14, 14 sorry, here. I couldn't remember yeah. what no, I just read there. No, that's all good. Uh, this is a challenging hole right here. Yeah, uh, this, this is... not as much has changed uh, with with your Reno or anything. No, nothing's nothing at all has happened here. Um, except for the trees on the left getting a lot bigger. Yes. Um, another memory as a child. I'm, I'm lucky enough. I'm the head pro here at the course I grew up on. Mm -hmm. I don't think a lot of people will ever get to experience that. So that's really cool to be able to influence and have a say in a place I care about so much and yeah. has spent a whole lot to my life. Um, yeah, I, I grew up here. I met my wife here. I got engaged here. I got married here. Um, so this is a pretty special place to me. Um, but yeah, this hole, I, I remember this green, there's a green irrigation box here, and that was all that was between the tee and the hole when it first opened. No kidding. Because um, this was a, an additional hole added in the mid-90s. Mm -hmm. um, so now there's big trees on the left. Yep. Um, yeah, you've got all kinds of options. You can hit tall. hybrid, three-wood iron out here to the right, and again, generous landing area if you want to want to be conservative and get it in play. Um, a lot of the big hitters can't constrain themselves and we're gonna we're gonna take <laughs> a shot gonna, at the we're green. gonna go yeah uh, and so the green's surrounded by uh evergreens uh, spruce trees that go straight to the ground so if you find one of those um a hopefully you find your ball and b you'll be taking a penalty drop and usually not in a great spot because <laughs> you um, can't hit from there yeah no yeah so <laughs> it comes with a risk to go for but it is a short hole uh, mm -hmm. i think as as the crow flies from the tee it's probably only about 310 Mm -hmm. um, but you do have a bunker in your line if you're taking the aggressive Absolutely. play at the green. But th there's not much landing area up here. No, but if you're in a scramble, small. just take it, I, right? As I've, as I've gotten older, I tend to lay back more and more <laughs> because I 
notice things like that that yeah. I didn't when I was 22. It was like, whatever, I'm going to get it Swing up away. there close. Yes. <laughs> and you don't care. There's no fear. No. <laughs> don't have all the scar tissue yet then. <laughs> all right. Number 14. Or, uh, 15, 15 here. 15. Yeah. This, is, uh, this is probably your best par four birdie opportunity on the golf course. Straight away, short hole, plays downwind. Um, yep. uh, my advice on this one is grab your driver, grip it, rip it, get it as far <laughs> down there as you can. Um, extremely flat green. Yeah. Um, it's tricky to read, but you can definitely uh, hole a putt on. There's there's a, there's a roll in op option there. Yeah. yeah. There is yeah. a fairway bunker on the right. Um, yeah, that's right. Typically, if it's downwind enough, hopefully uh, everyone will be able to hit it past it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's pretty short off the tee there. Um, but this one stays pretty wide the whole way. This is probably your widest. Not restricted driving, and then it's nice that it's typically downwind. Yeah. So. I remember golfing in a scramble probably 20 years ago now, and the guy in our group, long driver, and low shot, and he rolled it just within 10 feet of the green. Yeah. So. Yeah, you see a lot, of, a lot of players. I mean, even uh, if it's really hollow, and you know, and you'll see your better players knocking it on with three woods and hybrids. Yeah. So there so. you go. I mean. Get it up, let the wind sail. It's a fun hole. It doesn't always have to be hard. We can have some <laughs> nice, easy, straightaway birdie holes, too. <laughs> That's absolutely right. Got a lot of golfers out today. That's yeah. A, yeah, this is it, it, it's I, fairly typical. Um, usually, we'll be a little sore in the fall. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's a beautiful day out here. You can't beat, uh, beat this weather we've had the last couple days. Um, how many members uh, do you have out here? Um, so this year we have right around that 300 uh, season pass um, player mark, so which is really good. That's a, I think that's a good balance for us. Yeah. Do you have a cap um, at all for it? We or? don't. No. no. Okay. No. So we'll we'll uh, we'll sell passes starting November for the following year at a, at an early bird discount rate, mm -hmm. um, and then we'll we'll sell them all season long. So most of most people will buy them that early bird November December. So hopefully we'll have those uh, those prices out here in a couple of weeks for the 2024 season. Cool. And then I think when I come here, it just seems to be a little less crowded, um, which I like. Um, yeah, we do. And we do 10 minute tea times here, um, yeah. which it, it's ha happily, in my opinion, is becoming more standard. We're not seeing yes. that seven, eight minute cram everyone out there. Um, a, a really big point of emphasis for me out here is pace of play and that mm -hmm. part of the enjoyment of golf. Because if you're out here just slogging along, constantly waiting on people, <laughs> it's not fun. I think that's the biggest issue Nobody we, we deal with. And, and that, that's the biggest thing that can drive people away from the game mm -hmm. is when you've, you've just jammed them out there and, and it's taken forever. So we really pride ourselves on, you know, I think with, with the GPSs, we can see what our average pace of play is, and it's right around that three hours and 20 minute mark this there year. There you go. Which, and that's, you know, there's data that skews it one way or the other. True, you, if you have a lot of tournaments got, or something, I, I mean, or other got, tournaments go the other way. I've got a twosome that tees off first every single day that plays 18 holes in under two hours. So, <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. That might be a little too fast. Like, you can <laughs> come out and enjoy yourself still, but well. uh, don't, uh, don't hold up other people's day. <laughs> Absolutely. So this is a par five here. Yeah, 16. Uh, 16. Great hole. This is always the hole where, you know, if you haven't made a birdie yet and you really want to make one, this this is your chance right here at the end. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's a really short par five. I think from the normal tee, it's only about 440. Mm -hmm. um, pars, pars, whatever you want it to be. We, It's just this made up thing we did to, to better fall on professional golf on TV to know what they're at score wise. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's another, you know, like 12. Um, this hole probably is easier than 12, but we call it a par five. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's a, it is a narrow green protected by a bunker. It's a tough shot, but um, if you're if you're laying up or even trying to get it up there close to the green, out to the left is a generous mm -hmm. area, and then you've got a great angle into the screen, and, and the it's pins, another flat green. Yeah. The pins in the back right today, so that yeah, this that's, is a tough, that's, tough, that's tough pin today. <laughs> that's the where, that's where you play it left, and yeah, yeah, yeah you play it out to the left. Give yeah. yourself give yourself a mega angle, and <laughs> and you get it in there. But in the front left, that's perfect. Then it's a go time if yeah, you get in there. If you've got something in the front left of this of this green, go full at it. Even long, short, still have an easy shot if you if you miss hit it. Absolutely. Okay, so what do we got coming up next? Uh, so next we have the penultimate par three seventeenth. Um, really good par three. Um, my opinion, the best par three we've got out here. Plays back into the wind. Anywhere from 140 to 1, 185. Okay. Um, really, really severely undulated green. Hey guys. Um, 
yeah, not not many whole locations here either when when they're rolling pretty quick. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a great green. Uh, you really have to think about which side you want to miss on depending on where the pin is. So we've got a middle right one here today. Looks like a pretty inviting, simple it really does. whole location. <laughs> but if you miss the screen to the right, that up and down uh, is extremely difficult. It's brutal. Um, I mean, here short it's even right, like... Yeah, it's, it's breaking hard left from the right. Mm -hmm. It's going down. So this is one where, you know, my advice would be get that front left corner number and that's kind of where you want to hit it. I agree. I mean, I was thinking like short's fine here. If yes. You, uh, get the green, try to stick on the front because <laughs> yeah. everything's uphill from there. And Exactly. Yeah, uh, this, as you can see, <laughs> extremely severely sloped. So yeah, like with this kind of right middle pin, this front left corner, that, that ship looks pretty darn fun. Definitely. It's tasty there. <laughs> but this is this one's really built up all the ground around it. I think it's really a, another pretty par three. Yeah, it's a, it's an awesome hole. It's got, it does have water on the right too. Mm -hmm. um, so may or may it, not have played out of that before. Yeah, yeah. I've been there with you. <laughs> and we've reached the final hole here. Well, this one reminds me a lot of nine, um, sort of, because they kind of come both back towards the clubhouse. Yep, you have another dogway left to finish. This one's mm -hmm. about 60 yards longer than nine. Yes. Um, so plays a little more difficult, a lot tighter of a driving hole. Uh, right's no good in the trees, left's no good in the trees. Um, and this is kind of one, especially back into the wind, where you just kind of have to hit driver because you've got to yeah. get around this corner. Yeah, and it's, it's a long way to the you corner. Um, yeah, that's why right right side of the fairway is good yeah, so you can get a look at it at least. It's, a, it's another hole where a dog like hole, you want to almost draw a line down the middle of the fairway and say, I need to be one mm -hmm. side there. We Right here is fine. Um, we even got this little area here, uh, yeah. nice and open, gives you a good angle. Over there too. Yeah. Uh, some of our players refer to it as the garden. Just hit it over here in the garden. <laughs> the have, garden. Yeah, that's have, awesome. Have a nice little shot here. Some, somebody's way over in the garden there. Uh, yeah, that's uh, <laughs> that's no good over there. <laughs> let him hit, and it's like some of your members, a sweet looking cart right there. That's a big boy. <laughs> yeah, right? So Andrew, what else is there to, to know about uh, Brandon Golf Course? Uh, it's, it's just a great place calling out. We're open to everybody. Um, it's like anywhere else. You're going to have to make a tee time a good week in advance to get on. Yeah. Um, we got our fall rates going on right now, so it's a little cheaper to come out here this time of Shoulder year. Shoulder season, yeah. Yeah, it's not, not, as, not as busy. Might have to deal with a few leaves, but we try to do a pretty good job <laughs> picking those up. Yes, you do. You're blowing um, them off. We've been out here before on those days. Yeah. Yeah, we've got a big a big vacuum now that sucks okay. a lot too, so. Yeah, and then just, you know, coming up 18 here and finishing with this view up here is is pretty spectacular. So if you haven't been out here, come out. If it's been a while, yeah. um, we, we'd love to have you. Come on back, yeah. yeah. Conditions are fantastic. Highly recommend coming out here when you get a chance. Thanks for watching. Make sure you hit like on this video. Comment, have you played at Brandon before? Uh, we'd love to hear uh, what you think of it. Um, if you've been out here recently and the uh, something done, let us know. Thanks a lot. See you in the next one. Thanks, guys.